So here the pair of dogs, uh, Bruce and Jed, are just gathering up the whole flock. Yaws, lambs, dry hoggets, dry yaws, everything. And we need uh, two dogs with these sheep because these blackies are clever and as soon as you kind of have one side covered the other side tries to break. Lie down. This one here. Here. This one here. Lie down. In Wicklow we call this kind of sorting or shedding. We call it quilling. Lie down. So I'm just going to quill out all the yaws and lambs Lie and down. any yaws that have here. yet to be lambed and then I'll keep all the here. hoggets or the yearlings as I go. You could often be concentrating on you know taking a, a couple of yaws and lambs off uh, and so you're setting up your shed and on the other side they're breaking. This on here. So that's why you need another dog to cover the far end while you're working or concentrating on one particular place. And you need to be able to let them string out like this so that they can kind of sort themselves out and give you more opportunities to take off yaws and lambs. And I'm not just taking yaws and lambs, sometimes I'm taking yaws that haven't lambed yet, but I'm keeping back the hoggets or yearlings. So Lie it's down. nearly like having a, a, a fishing net, but you've got to keep it porous to let the stuff through that you don't want. And Lie at the same time, you've got to haul the stuff that you do want. Lie down. So you definitely need two dogs on these ladies because they're kind of clever. You take advantage of it if there's a weak spot. Jim. It often looks yep. like there's a shed, and this looks like one here. But Lie the down. trouble is I've got a dry hogget staying with this yaw and lamb. Could have been her, her lamb last year even. Some of them are, are fairly sticky that way they remember the mothers from last year. Black, come by. Lie down. This one here. Jim, lie down. And as I walk down the field, this is a long field. It could be 800 yards and then there's another field. But as I walk down, I can keep slipping off the ones that I don't want. And gradually Jim. it's like a sieve there, just Jim. keeping the ones that I do want while I gradually make my way towards the pen the handling unit. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Bruce. Lie down. Lie down. This one. Ready. This one here. So you can see there we're after shaking out a few and sometimes we have to kind of just give them a little bit of a rattle to, to get the one that we need to keep out of the little bundle. You can see there that the lamb is able to figure out that he's with the wrong bunch and he'd sort himself out and get back with his mother. So I'm just shuffling them up a little bit here, moving around to see what more of them kind of present themselves to let me leave them behind. I don't. I have to remember to bring the quad with me too as I go. And here we're passing through some cows and the dogs need to work the sheep uh, as if the cows aren't there because if they don't, the sheep, if the sheep realise a bit of weakness there, they'll take advantage of it. So we're after coming down about, making our way down about seven or eight hundred yards down this field and we're coming to the gate so I'm going to let him into the next smaller paddock before I start to go quilling again on him. This angle will give you a little bit of an idea of the scale of it and this is probably like the bottom, the bottom fifth of the field or something.
these blackies, they look they look very simple. They look like they're just flowing along like water or whatever. But they, they can take advantage of you very fast. If your dogs were getting tired or your dogs were slack anywhere, they soon, uh, it's nearly like they stop and start laughing at you and they could split off, you know, or they go wherever they want. They don't? But these two dogs are, you know, they're probably almost five and maybe six and a half years old so they know the game they know their job and they know exactly what they need to be doing and the sheep know that the dogs know so the sheep don't take advantage and then they don't beat us anywhere this one here 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 i'm we did quite well with this bunch really uh, you know we're probably down to maybe we've got about four sheep that we need to pull off this bunch over in the pens and we'll make our way over to the pens now but um, the, 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 it kind of looks fairly simple and all but it's quite difficult because some of these dry hoggets you know they're they're with their mother from last year and all so like they're comrade sheep and all and they don't just split up for I free don't. so um but then that's the beauty too of coming down across 800 yards and this other 200 yards uh, it gives you plenty of time to to shed them off quill them off and you know and let I them don't. run back up to their top ground where they want to be so at I least don't. the waste the stuff we we shed off it gets out of the way pretty quick i don't i don't i don't i don't I don't. I don't. I don't. So I don't. you can see here we have them in the handling unit and uh, two dogs have a good hold and everything. I don't. And I have some rams there in a separate pen. I'm going to foot bath those I after don't. this. But it, it, first I'm going to bring these up and I'm going to put them in that brown pen, that sorting pen. And I, I can don't. pick off any yo's or any yeah and, and the three or four extra yo's that we have in it we'll pick those off and let them out and then um, we'll just earmark these hoggets because they'll I be don't. going to the hill pretty soon and they need to have a night in fire on them i, I split the bunch here because they won't all fit in the round pen I don't. and when this is finished i'll just let them out to a secure paddock and uh, bring them to the hill in a week or so mm.